The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is a very unevenly edited book, and it contains many passages that simply seem to its editors, like a good idea at the time. One of them supposedly relates the experiences of one Viet Vujagig, a quiet young student at the University of Maxi Megalon, who pursued a brilliant academic career studying ancient philology, transformational ethics, and the wave harmonic theory of historical perception. And then, after a night of drinking pan-galactic gargle blasters with Zaphod Beeblebrox, became increasingly obsessed with the problem of what had happened to all the biros he'd bought over the past few years. There followed a long period of painstaking research, during which he visited all the major centres of biro loss throughout the galaxy, and eventually came up with a quaint little theory which quite caught the public imagination at the time. Somewhere in the cosmos, he said, along with all the planets inhabited by humanoids, reptiloids, fishoids, walking treeoids, and superintelligent shades of the colour blue, there was also a planet entirely given over to biro life forms. And it was to this planet that unattended biros would make their way, slipping away quietly through wormholes in space to a world where they knew they could enjoy a uniquely biroid lifestyle, responding to highly biro orientated stimuli, and generally leading the biro equivalent of the good life. As theories go, this was all very fine and pleasant, until Viet Vujagig suddenly claimed to have found this planet, and to have worked there for a while, driving a limousine for a family of cheap green retractables. Whereupon he was taken away, locked up, wrote a book, and was finally sent into tax exile, which is the usual fate reserved for those who are determined to make a fool of themselves in public. When one day an expedition was sent to the spatial coordinates that Vujagig had claimed for this planet, they discovered only a small asteroid inhabited by a solitary old man who claimed repeatedly that nothing was true, although he was later discovered to be lying. There did, however, remain the question of both the mysterious 60,000 Altarian dollars paid yearly into his Brantis Vogan bank account, and of course Zaphod Beeblebrox's highly profitable second-hand biro business.